It's mailbag time here on Chicago Bears Now. My name is Harrison Graham. For more coverage, day-to-day -day coverage of the Chicago Bears, hit the subscribe button, share that link with a friend. It's youtube.com slash bears now. From Andre Bryant, who's under more pressure in week one, Luke Getze or Alan Williams? I think it's Al I think it's Luke Getze, I mean, because all eyes are on the offense, right? Like, look, if we get into week six and the defense is still bad, then yeah, like the, the pressure is going to ramp up on Alan Williams. But this year is much more about Justin Fields in this offense taking the next step. We know this team can run the football. We know Fields is a dynamic playmaker. Can they be more balanced? Can the passing game uh, be adequate and be a, a good complement to this rushing attack? I think it's got to be uh, on Luke Getze here. The Gabo, would you sign Nick Bosa or Chris Jones? Well, neither are free agents, but if I had to trade for one, I think I would, chick, uh, I would choose Nick Bosa just because he's, I think, like three or four years younger. Chris Jones is 29. Nick Bosa, I think, is 25. So uh, I would choose Bosa, but uh, both are special talents. I think Jones would be a tick cheaper just because he is older, but... You're going to have to pay a lot to get both in a trade in terms of capital, and then you're going to have to pay each crazy money. So just be prepared for that. Tito, anybody claim Terrell Lewis yet? So as we're filming this on Thursday, I have not seen. Uh, I have not seen if Terrell Lewis has been claimed off of wa waivers, which tells me, because it's almost 4 o'clock on Thursday after the deadline, that he is still available. And if that's the case, that's a win for the Bears. They should absolutely bring him back to the practice squad. Corbin Britton, why didn't we go spend on another offensive lineman? I mean, look, you got five healthy guys right now. We can flash the depth chart real quick here, Corbin. Um, obviously, Tevin Jenkins and Doug Kramer are on, are on IR, but if you roll into week one with this as your starting five or maybe Dan Feeney at center, I think you can live with that group. Uh, you still have Larry Borum, whoever doesn't start out of P Patrick and Feeney and Jatyree Carter as backups. And I think you actually feel okay about those three options. So uh, yeah, I think, I think you're okay for now. Now, if one more guy goes down, like if you lose one of your tackles, God forbid, or if Nate Davis has another thing come up, um, then yeah, you're, you're, you're pretty stretched in there. But I think with the eight you have right now, I think you can get by. You guys know the motto. Week one is almost here. Get the FGBs going in the chat. FGB. FGB, FGB. If you hate the Packers, spam FGB right now. Vibin' with the dog, Jackson, Edmonds, Moore, Fields, name captains, good group if you ask me. How about you, Harrison? Yeah, I think it's a good group. Um, voted by players. Uh, the, the Bears are doing the same thing they did last year. Four team captains throughout the season, and then a fifth honorary captain every single week. So your four permanent captains will be Justin Fields, DJ Moore, Tremaine Edmonds, and Eddie Jackson. I like that Fields was voted as a captain again. I think you'd be a little worried if he wasn't. You need your quarterback to have that respect from his teammates. And also, I think it's telling that two of your newest members are captains, DJ Moore and Tremaine Edmonds. They're expected to be really good players for you. That's why you went out and got them. But the fact that they've stepped in here and become leaders so quickly, I think that speaks volume. I think the leadership on this team is stronger. Tito with the $10. I don't watch too much college football. Who are the top five edges, uh, offensive linemen, and wide receivers? That's asking me a lot on the fly here, Tito. Um, Dallas Turner out of Bama is a good edge rusher. Ohio State's got a kid that I'm completely blanking on. Oh, the Florida State kid, Jared Verse. He's a stud. The Penn State tackle, Olu, Olu Shanu, whatever his name is. Uh, he's a good player. Rolly, you want to step in here? And then obviously wide receivers. You got the two Ohio State Bulls. Of Marvin Harrison and Emeka Abuka. And I feel like there's another wide receiver I'm spacing on. Um, I mean, there's guys the like Xavier Worthy. I don't know if he's a round one guy, but he's a speedster out of Texas. Uh, Mario Williams at USC is a pretty good player. He was kind of overlooked last year because of Jordan Addison. Uh, there's always receivers that emerge, though. We know that. So, uh, yeah, there's going to be plenty of options on the outside, not just the two dudes from Ohio State. Kurt Bickford, I had a Packers fan tell me I better get ready to get owned by Jordan Love week one. Am I the only one that I that feels like I'd be sick to my stomach if that happened? I mean, yes, if Jordan Love goes out there and picks apart the Bears and throws for three or four touchdowns, I think we're all going to feel sick to our stomachs. Um, 
I think it'll be a little up and down. I think there will be some plays where, like, yeah, the kid can spin it. I mean, we've seen that. He's got a strong arm. He's he's pretty mobile. He he looks the part, but he always he's going to give your secondary chances to make plays. There will be two or three throws where the Bears have a chance to make a play on the football, and you got to make those plays. It's that simple. Uh, so I I hope the Bears are able to do that. Love is going to make some plays, but the Bears will have opportunities to take the football away too. I feel good about that. John Thompson with the five, and if you're watching live, we'll catch up on the the uh, shots here. Nervous about week one. We can't lose to Green Bay anymore. FGB, F Jordan Love, drink up. We'll be drinking in a second. Yeah, I mean, the nerves are going to kick in. I'm not there yet. Uh, I'm anxious for the game to get here, but when kickoff's here, when that national anthem gets done playing and Cairo Santos or the Packers kicker has the ball teed up, it's go time, baby. The heart race is going to be up a little bit, but that's the nerves you live for, right? Like, that's the nerves I live. That's why I do this, because I just I can't wait for it, man. Let's go. Get the FGBs and the FJLs going. Bet US if you want to go bet on this week one matchup between the Bears and the Packers. Get set up today. Create an account. Chatsports.com slash Bears. Promo code is Bear Down. All one word, Bear Down. Put down 100 bucks, you get 125 for free with that deposit bonus. And this game's getting closer to a pick 'em. At one point, the Bears were two and a half point favorites. Now they're just one point favorites. The over under. 43 and a half points between the two teams. So Vegas is basically saying 22-21 Bears. They think it's going to be tight. Now, I think it'll be close. I wouldn't have it that tight, but uh, I'll have my official prediction next week. So chatsports.com slash Bears. Promo code is Bear Down. Augustine, what would be the best stat line, in your opinion, for Justin Fields against the Packers in week one? How many touchdowns? I mean, shit, if he threw for 300 and ran for another 50-plus uh, and had four touchdowns, let's go, baby. Um, in terms of, like, a stat line I'd be adequate with, how about, like, 17 for 28, 223 yards passing, two touchdowns, 62 yards rushing, and another touchdown? So that'd be about 280 total and three scores, maybe just one turnover. I think we'd all take that, right? I think that's a realistic-ish stat line. That's, that's what I'm signing up for. And I think that would, would that be enough to win that game. R. Wildecrab, has there been a Nate Davis sighting? He's been out there the last two days in pads. So Nate Davis at practice, uh, depending on when you're watching this, we're recording this Q&A live but on Thursday. But Wednesday and Thursday, he practiced. He's been out there. So that's a positive development. Hopefully that continues next week and uh, leading up to kickoff here in week one. So hashtag Bears Super Chat. Get your questions on the show if you have any questions. Chaz thinks the Bears are going to get off to a or going to go fifteen and two. That's his prediction. Get your record predictions. I'll have an official record prediction video go out before Week One, but uh, get yours in right now. Seventeen game season. What's the Bears' record going to be? Michael Ellis, what is the status of the injuries? I was hearing that the only one. That is out, and that is Tevin Jenkins. Well, Tevin Jenkins and Doug Kramer are on injured reserve. They're out at least the first four weeks. Jaquan Brisker and Dylan Cole uh, did not practice on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, they are uh, still in that day-to-day -day category per Matt Eberflus, but both were stretching before Thursday's practice. So hopefully, uh, at least in Brisker's case especially, uh, they are ready to go for week one. So that's where things sit now. Everybody else that's been out, they're back out there practicing. So that's a very, very positive sign, Michael. So I think all in all, you can feel good about where the Bears' health situation is. Claypool over 600 yards. If he plays all 17 games, he'll have over 600. I think so. Um, can't say how much more than 600. A lot of mouths to feed all of a sudden. DJ Moore, Darnell Mooney, Cole Komet, You know the Bears are going to run the football, but... I will go over 600 yards for week one. Name a player the Bears should sign before week one. Drop his name down in the comments below. Offensive line, defensive line. If you want a different receiver, you got seven receivers now, but maybe you want one. Let us know. Name somebody the Bears should sign. All right, that's going to do it for this mailbag video. My name is Harrison Graham. Subscribe for more coverage. We got you covered here on a daily basis here on Chicago Bears Now.